Brother Paul, greetings to you in the name of the Lord, our Savior. Why are you here? You are supposed to be reading and healing the chief of the Lord. Well, this is my earthly job. Who are you? How did you know my name? Oh, never mind who I am and how I know your name. Just answer my question. Well, um, I mean, a man has to make ends meet. So, I have answered your question, right? Maybe you should answer mine now. Okay, let's just say that I'm a man who is sometimes privileged to be in the presence of the Lord. I know you've already perceived that in your heart. Now tell me, why did you leave your post now that the harvest is riper than ever? You should know that the end time is here. Well, this job is temporary. I had a misunderstanding with my brethren, so I had to find a way to make ends meet. You've spoken correctly. You see, before now, you've pleased the Lord by your charity and works of faith. But you've lacked the most essential thing, and that's the passport to the heavenly kingdom. I suspect you are a prophet. And you also. Please, tell me where I have failed the Lord. You see, when the Lord walked the earth, there was a lamb, and he gave us grace. Moses, the lawgiver, was the humblest man on earth during his own time. Am I making sense to you? Yes. yes. God is love and your restoration is there. Uh, uh, please. I would like to know you more. Well, I'm your brother and your co-worker. Someday, when it pleases the Lord, you will know me better. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. let me just call for a toast first before we continue with what Oh, no problem, no problem. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Cheers, man. Yeah. Mm. Wow. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, I brought you here this evening to the Josh Game. This is my latest. Oh, really? Yeah, because of a friend. That is wonderful. Yeah. Mm. Like I promised my lady here, yeah. but after our next meeting, yes. I'm going to take her for UK for two weeks. I holiday. Yeah. Do you like good things? You know? yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, I told you. I am oh, the godfather of all the politicians in this country. I mean, the president, the governor, we put them there. Yeah. And whatever we ask them to do, they do it for us. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Look, look, look. We rule this country. Yeah. And money is not our problem. Exactly. At all. Money is about to that. Money have fun. No, we will yeah. we'll be free. What will I have to do now? You just yeah. tell me what you want. Be free, just. Mm. You make it yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Where do you want to spend your summer? I'll let you go to the Caribbean. The Caribbean? Mmm, that is okay. I'm going to do that for you. We just a call, you are there. Just have fun, man. Baby. Enough of the tears, Lillian. It's okay, sister. Let her cry out to the Lord. The psalmist in Psalm 51, verse 17, said that the Lord does not reject a repentant heart nor a contrite spirit. <laughs> God ever forgive me. I really sinned. My blood then you are for me. My sisters are crazy. Judging me. <laughs> the Lord God loves you. He always chastises those that he loves. Mommy, she has caused so much grief to Pastor Paul. You know, I heard that the villagers he was sent to their parish pursued him. His wife left him. And he has returned back to the city, working as an ordinary salesman. Oh my God! <laughs> Mommy, 
Why did I allow devil to use me to cut swords at last? Oh, a true man of God. Jesus. It's okay, Sister Eunice. We can never know the mind of God. He's an awesome God and His ways are not our ways. He's a mysterious God. My daughter Lydia, like I told you earlier on, our revival is coming and this is an opportunity for you to key in and ask God to forgive you. Okay, okay. Alright? Okay, mommy. I don't mind your homeless, but the question is, how do we compensate Pastor Paul? The Lord is on the throne. Amen. It's okay. Pastor James, Pastor James, the peace of the Lord be unto this house. Did I hear you say peace? Dickie John, peace grew when some flew away from this house long, long time ago. Peace have eluded me. The death of your wife does not mean the end of the world. You still have your children and the entire church to live for. Don't even bother consoling me because I'm inconsolable as you speak. I can see that your pain is grief, but I can also see something else. What is it you see? I see guilt. Somehow I see that you're responsible for her death. Why are you saying that? Pastor James, conscience is as an open wound. Only two can be. I don't understand what you're talking about. Why didn't you tell us that your wife ran mad before she died? How dare you? How dare you tell me my wife ran mad? Have you come here to console me or to compound my sorrows? Far be it. You know I cannot do such a thing. But well, that's exactly what you're doing. No, Master James. Your children told me everything. But well, don't bother. We all have black spots in our lives. When Jesus died on the tree of Calvary, he made the shame of the devil. By so doing, he took away our shame also. had my suspicions about all the allegations levied um, against Pastor Paul. Hi, there must be tears in heaven. I've seen against man and God. I've done the most awful thing to a man who calls me his spiritual father. Hi. You don't have to be too hard on yourself. Even the wise King Solomon said that there's nothing new under the sun. This is, this is new to me. This is new to my ministry. Ha! Huh? Technology. Modern technology is an accomplice to sin. There is nothing wrong with modern technology. And that is why God allows it. It's just the devil that uses it for his own advantage. Oh, by the way, do you remember that book you gave to me, written by uh, Pastor Chris Okuti, The Last Outcast? 
where he said that uh, the last technology fit would be the cloning of the Antichrist. Even what Lillian did is a proof to it. It is a proof to it. Oh, Paul. Paul, how I have offended you. How will I ever pay you back? I guess uh, God allows certain things to happen for his own plans and purpose. You have always been a good man of God. And you've always uh, preached to your flocks and quoted the Apostle Paul when he said, um, all things happen for the good of those who love the Lord. You, can, you cannot understand the depth of my transgression. I fell in the basic area of Christianity. I failed to love. I failed to preach what I practice. I failed to practice what I preach. I've killed Jesus who loves me. I've put my ministry above where it's supposed to be. You should not judge yourself so hard. Mm, I should have listened to you. I should not have allowed the deadly passions of anger and anxiety to be cloud my reasoning. Well, the good thing is that um, she is uh, feeling guilty and being repentant. And with the revival thing that you've organized, if she keys into it, I'm sure she will be delivered and um, she will reconcile with God. That is all that matters. I have searched everywhere for him. I have tried all his contacts. But nobody seems to know his whereabouts. Hi! Pastor John, what happened to his phone? So my conclusion is that he had decided to completely wipe off his past because his phone is permanently switched off. Oh my God. But his wife might know his new phone number. Jill, that one is another dead end. I tried calling her. Really, she heard my voice. She caught the call. <sighs> and when I sent a test, telling her that her husband had been vindicated, she replied, saying that she has nothing to do with the church, nor the husband. Ah, Jesus Christ. Hey, Pastor Paul. Sir. Please, 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 please help us to locate him. My soul torments me like hell fire until I find him and make amends. I know that one day God will lead us to him as we continue in prayer. Sir. I pray, I pray. Ha. It's all right. Please do whatever you can do. Keep your eyes on Jesus, keep your eyes on him. He knows what you're going through. So how is it going? The purchasing manager told me that you are excelling in your job. <laughs> God is excellent. Oh, can you leave God out of this and be human for once? Be human for once, Paul. He is the basis of our being. You see, God guides us in everything, if only we let him. That is one thing I want you to understand. Paul, if you must know, I built this company with my brains and hard labor. I did not go to a Bible college or a church to help me do it. That may be so, but... Someday you will realize that you need God in everything in spite of success. Anyway, that is not why I called you. The reason I called you here is because I was told that you are preaching to my staff at every slightest opportunity. Paul, I want you to know that this is a business premises, not a church. I don't want you to turn my business into a church. But I must do the work that I'm called to do at every opportunity. Romans 1 verse 16. Apostle Paul affirmed that we should not be ashamed of the gospel of God, for it is the power of God unto salvation. Spare me that sermon, Paul. So you have some days to do all of that. What I want you to understand is every time you preach here, you are wasting man hour. And that is never welcomed in the world of business. Keep your eyes on Jesus, keep your eyes on him. He knows what you're going through, just keep your eyes on
Okay, Lillian, listen to me. You don't have to kneel down for any human being. Except God. It's only God you kneel down for. Oh my God, oh my Come, God. let's go inside. Oh, stop. Pastor, I was at the verge of losing it. Do you know I almost committed suicide? If not for my younger sister who took me to a prophetess. And she revealed what my sins were. Yes. It is the greatest mercy to receive forgiveness here on earth. It gives us the grace to repent so as not to be condemned on the Lord's day of judgment. You mean you've forgiven me? Pastor, I destroyed your life. I destroyed your calling and your ministry. Yeah, well, um, to tell you the truth, Lillian, I hated you. You know? Spent days and days on end, sleepless nights, hating you and wishing you the worst. You know, I even got angry with God for not destroying you. Well, yeah, but I, as I kept believing in the God of justice, the Spirit of God took me to the book of Matthew chapter 5, where our Lord Jesus Christ was talking about forgiving our enemies 70 times, 7 times. That's where I drew my strength. And then, after that I had what I can describe as a uh, heavenly visitation. You mean you saw an angel? Uh, sort of, you know, but not in the right sense. But thereafter I started praying for you and all those who despised me throughout the incidents. God, you're such a noble man. I can't believe you're having this discussion. Don't praise me. Not by might nor by power, but by the spirit of the merciful King of Glory. So, so Pastor, where is your wife now? I don't know. I don't want to talk about her, but I believe that wherever she is, God is blessing her. <sighs> My son. Today will be celebrated every year in this ministry as a day of reconciliation. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, my Father and the Lord. I'm glad to be so honored. The last one month has been particularly difficult for us. My very soul was tempted beyond limit, and I almost fell into despair when we could not find you. I can imagine, my lord. You see, you and every member in this church were always on my mind. I never ceased praying for everyone in this commission, not for one day. Pastor Paul, your love, your hope and your faith in the Lord is capable of making one cry. Thank God. My son, will you accept me back as a prodigal father? <laughs> Oh, my father in the Lord, the Bible has no record whatsoever about a prodigal father. And he wouldn't be the first. What we should do now is to rejoice and thank God for the great things he has done for us today. And the girl? Oh, her matter was already settled before I came here. You know, she suffered as much as I did. Our prayer now should be for the Lord to grant her great mercy. Mm. Mm.
you. Are you saying this vehicle belongs to me? Yes, and uh, also a duplex, just like that of James. Hey! All as a token of reconciliation. Oh, Nyezi Kambo. Hey! Zio, this is not a joke, is it? <laughs> Paul, you deserve it. The Lord has provided it for you. And who are we to keep it back from you? If this were to be April 1. Of course, you know it's not. It's all reality this time. Let me ask, where is your wife? Oh. Hmm. To tell you the truth, I don't know where she is. She doesn't pick my call anymore. I don't know. But I believe that one day, she will come back to me. She will have a change of heart and come back to me if it is the will of God. Amen. Pastor James. Uh, Pastor Paul. I heard the tragic news of your wife's death. Such a monumental loss. Such a tragedy. She was so full of life. So full of life the last time I saw her. Thank you. Thank you. It was very painful, very painful. But as Christians, we take um, solace in uh, the fact that we know that our loved departed ones are resting in the bosom of the Lord. So I'm so glad to hear that coming from you. I mean, it's, it's not easy. But I'm glad that you have taken this tragedy in your stride based on our Christian faith and the teaching of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you. It is well. Thank you. Please, uh, Pastor Paul, I owe you a personal apology. You see, I took, I, I, I gloried in your travails because I thought the geo was going to give me your position. But eventually, things uh, took a different turn. Please, forgive me. Pastor James, did you say forgive? There is nothing to forgive because I no longer consider you as somebody who has offended me. You see, all is well. All is well. After all, it's How are you? I'm fine, sir. Sit down. Thank you, sir. 
Yes. Daddy, I want to speak with you. What about? It's about the Office of the Finance and Administration. Yes, I'm listening. Daddy, I know it's difficult for you. But the Spirit has led me to make it easy for you. Yes. Since the rightful and original occupant of the position is around, considering the injustice done to him, I want to hand over to him, sir. <sighs> My daughter, God will bless you. Amen. What you have done is a demonstration of humility. The type that is read these days, especially among church leaders. Once again, God will bless you abundantly. And may your days be heavenly, heavenly. Amen. Thank you, sir. Yes, my dear. I'll take my leave, sir. My pleasure. Yes. <laughs> oh. So, okay, you come back. Everything is ready. Okay. <laughs> See? You remember what I told you when this whole thing started? Oh, yes. You said so many comforting and encouraging things. I remember I called you Barnabas. The son of encouragement. Yes. I did prophetically tell you that in this great commission, the higher the conflict, the more glorious the trial. Yes, you did. You see, now, more than ever before, I understand why Apostle John called it the great commission. I hope you also understand why Apostle Paul started as the least amongst the apostles and ended the greatest. Where is your wife? Well, the one you call the greatest had no wife. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go inside. <laughs> See you're going to the church. Please just enter the car. Let me drop you. Somebody, never mind. I'll get a taxi. Uh, Lillian, I can see you're still angry. I know I've wronged you, but I and I treated you like. I'm not angry. You don't need to blame yourself. Whatever affair we we're having then, they were all dirty in the sight of God. I still blame myself. A nice girl like you does not deserve this kind of treatment. See, I know I've wronged you, but. I promise I'm, I'm going to make it up. Please, you don't need to blame yourself, okay? The Lord Jesus has healed my wound. Please, I'll get a taxi. That's fine, but you still have helped me into your heart. My heart? <sighs> the truth is, I I'm not ready to give out my heart again to you because you pieces it. Yes, yeah, so to prove it to you. No, 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 no. Right there in front no. of you. I'm going with you to your church, right in the presence of God. I'm going to propose to you and I'll meet your pastor to fix a day for the wedding, please. Please, please Lillian, please. <laughs> Lillian, please, please Lillian. Do you understand? Do you understand? 
Is good. Oh, oh, by the way, which um, church do you worship in? And are you a born again? Mommy, I don't really understand what it means to be a born again. But I know I love Lillian. And for her sake, I want you to tell me what it means to be a born again. Very well then. Um, <laughs> well, being a born again is quite easy. It's accepting Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. You have to decide to forget your old sins and move forward. Forget sins for the future. Live according to God's words. Would you be able to do that? Yes, ma'am. Good. Then can you repeat after me? My Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus. I accept you. As my personal Lord and Savior. I accept you as my personal Lord and Savior. I have decided to forget the sins of my past. I have decided to forget the sins of my past. I want to embrace you and be good for me. You're very late for work today, Paul. It's unlike you. What happened? That's because uh, from today, I cease to work here. I don't understand. Are you resigning or you found a better job? Well, you can put it that way. I am going back to my real job. The ministry of our Lord Jesus. Manager, thank you for being a good boss. Um, wait a minute. Are you now a pastor or what? I thought you were just uh, a good Christian. My real calling is in the vineyard of the Lord. And brother, I want you to give your life to Christ. For it is written, what shall it profit a man to get the whole world and lose his soul? You know, um, coming from someone like you, it, it makes more sense. I've never met a man like you before. Please, Paul, how do I give my life to God? You must be born again. Forsake your old ways. Confess your sins. And God will grant you that peace which passes all understanding. You will be a new creature. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Paul. Paul, I want you to listen to me and listen real good. You came here down and out, thrown out by the people you call your brethren. Now you were here telling me that you want to go back to there. Are you out of your senses? My brother and friend, frankly, I want you to understand that there is nothing better in this whole wide world than working in the vineyard of the Lord. Damn it, Paul. They are all thieves. Pastors will fleece gullible members of their money and tell them some fallacies that someday they'll end up in a candy mountain called heaven or frost ass. Quote me anywhere. Absolutely, I agree with you. There are fake, fraudulent pastors. Even Jeremiah 23rd even mentions about woe being unto the pastors that lead the sheep astray. But then, the original pastors outnumber the fake ones, and I belong to the original. Really? Yes. So, why do they throw you out in the first place? Paul, I want you to be wise. As far as I am concerned, they are only tricking you back to make a fool out of you again. How can you forget so soon the proverbial adage? The fox may lose its hair, but it can never lose its tricks, remember? I understand and share your concern, my brother, but you see, the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ is imminent. So some of us are called to pull back people from the highway to hell. That is 2,000 years ago. 2,000 years ago, Paul, and he has never returned. A thousand years in the eyes of man is but a day in the eyes of God. That is apparent that you are cracked up. 
deceived. That is what you are. And it's like there is no ending to it. My prayer is that God will forgive you, give you the wisdom and understanding to know the truth. Truth? What truth are you talking about? That is the same question that Pontius Pilate asked our Lord 2,000 years ago. Enough of that nonsense, Paul. Perhaps let me remind you of the old adage of once bitten, twice shy. Paul, it is obvious to me that you are a fool. That is what you are. And may God help you. Ah, now you talk about God, frankly. At least you recognize the supremacy of God. Thank you so much for the opportunity to work here. But as you mentioned God, I want to send in it. I couldn't get any more. Thank you very much. I'm out. See, I... Do you like it here, son? Do they treat you well? Do they take good care of you? Yes, but Dad, these people, they can be very strict. <laughs> ah, but sometimes they can be caring too. <laughs> Thank God for that. <laughs> uh, does your mother come here often to see you? No, not at all. Not at all. Really? She has not come here before, but she calls me on phone sometimes. Oh, oh that means you have her phone number. Uh, that's another problem. She calls me with different numbers. And each time I try calling her, the number seems switched off. So, I don't know. I see. Well, never mind. That's not a problem. So long as you're okay here, I, I won't worry. Do you need anything? Anything? No. Are you sure? Yes. Well, even at that, uh, of course you're a student. Yeah, I just hold that as pocket money just in case. I know seminaries, if they know you have this money, they will take it away from you. No, they so will. just keep it, just in case. But if you need anything at all, you have my phone number. Call me. Right, I'll so. not fear to do that. Uh, please, Thank you very much, Daddy. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I'll leave you now. Okay? Yeah? Take good care of yourself. Mm -hmm. All right, so. Grab <laughs> I will. in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Is everything all right? I think it I did not watch the late night news last night. No, I, I didn't. I was so tired, you know, as soon as I got home, I went straight to bed. Was there anything of interest in the news? I'm afraid I have bad news for you. Senator Conta was assassinated last night. Jesus Christ! Hey! Oh. 
politicians, politicians. What would they do? To what extent would they go to, to grab power? Hey! God. Well, you don't have to look so sad. I mean, we keep away from politicians and, and politics. See, Pastor Paul, I hate being a harbinger of bad news, but your wife, Janet, was with him when he was assassinated. Janet came in. My wife? Oh, God. Was she hurt? But from the news, they said she was wounded. She was in fighting hospital. Ah! I've been looking for my wife for months now. So I'm going to end up seeing her, seeing her in the hospital with bullet wounds. Sorry, Fountain, Fountain Hospital. Yeah, Fountain Hospital. Fountain. Well, sorry, I wonder what she was doing with the senator in his car. That is not important. And I don't see how that concerns you. James. Yes, well, you said you have something to discuss with me. Um, yes. Listening. It's uh, I'm listening. It's about my late wife. It's been a while now since she died, and I'm so lonely. I, I need a company, so I'm thinking of remarrying. So I've come to let you know. Doctor, is it okay to talk to her? Yes, you do that. Yes, sir. No, sir. Who is she to you? Um, she's... She's my sister. My sister? Yes. Well, your sister is so lucky. The one that brought her here, we observed her. I mean, there's nothing to worry about, okay? We just shock. We tie should be out of it. You just need to calm down, okay? Thank you, sir. Thank you, Jesus. You be out of it. Thank you, Father. So, she's not in any danger? Not, not at all, sir. Oh, thank God. Oh. Yes, Doctor, the people that brought her here, did they bring any of her personal effects? Maybe her bag or cell phone? You check with the nurses at the reception. I think they have it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you sir. I don't know, uh, how will I know when she wakes up? Because you said I can't talk to her until she wakes up. Okay. You drop your number at the reception. We'll give you a call if she wakes up. Thank you so much, sir. Um, I think, um, sir, I think um, you should be on your way now. I still have other patients to attend to. You have done so much for me, doctor. Thank you. James, have you discussed this matter with your children? Mm, not yet. Yes, I, I suggest you talk it over with them because um, this is a very dicey situation and you need to carry them along. And uh, you need the grace of God at this point in time so that um, you don't make any mistake about it. So you need to pray about it um, so that um, uh, God will give you a woman who will not create problems uh, for you. Okay? 
And more importantly, the woman must be God fearing. And it must be somebody who will be able to take your children like her own children. And that way you will not have any conflict to face. That's all right. Yes. I have been uh, praying about it and I'm believing that the Holy Spirit will uh, reveal the woman to me and uh, order my footsteps towards that. And as for my children, like you said, I will certainly discuss it with them. Thank you very much, Jill. Thank you. It's all right. I have to be on my way. I wish you the best of luck. Yes. Huh? Mm. yes. Okay. accusations against me and so the church called me back, bought me a car, rented a duplex for me and even doubled my salary. Wonderful! Yes. Wonderful my son. This is good news. This cause for celebration. Indeed Papa. Indeed. But first you need a wife Papa. to enjoy all these things. Papa I have a wife. Don't tell me you have remarried without my knowledge. Oh no, of course not. The wife that you joined me to marry is still alive and well. What? That Janet? The Janet that left you and followed all the men? It is an abomination, Paul. It is an abomination. You can't live with an adulterous woman. The no. Jesus Christ that I follow. Is a merciful and forgiving God. Is it not the same Jesus that forbid adultery in the Ten Commandments and also said the only ground for divorce is adultery? Is it not? Papa, the Bible says that all men have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That is why Jesus, when the adulterous woman was being accused, he told the accusers that if any one of them deemed themselves sinless, they should be the one to cast the first stone. None of them did. Onyo Abu Nawa. Papa Listen, my son. I can no more understand this your new religion. Paul, I can't understand. Papa, the mysteries of the things of God are not open to mere mortals. Therefore, you will not understand. I have forgiven her. Hallelujah. <laughs> well, I call you children to officially let you know that. I want to settle that with you. I want to remarry. I'm bored. Very lonely. 
I need a company. You know, you, you children are you're hardly around. So I need a woman around me to keep me company. Another wife. We are here to take care of you. We'll do anything you want us to do. We'll keep you company, we'll take care of you. Please. Daddy, you're a man of God. He taught us that every child of God is a bride in Jesus Christ. Taking another wife will only bring dishonor to our mother's memory. Moreover, your pastoral work is enough company to you. Daddy, I'm beginning you know her death was tragic. To tell you the truth, we don't need a stepmother. Please change your mind. Well, <clears throat> I will call you both to secure your opinion. I want to officially let you know that I'm getting married and that's it. Daddy, this woman in Preston might pretend to be good for a while until she comes in and takes control. Women are territorial beings. They tend to dominate and manipulate whatever the environment they found themselves. Daddy, I know this because I am studying psychology. Mark, I didn't call you here to educate me on psychology. Now, both of you leave your discussion is over. Yeah, please now. Out, I said. Our Papa in the Lord, the point we are making is that we don't want our father to remarry. His marriage to another woman will bring division into the family. And we are determined to resist him. He is defiling the memory of our mother after her tragic death. There is no way another woman will come into our family and not cause confusion and disharmony. Papa, please, please help us stop him. Well, children, I have listened to your viewpoints and I consider them valid. But this is a very bad dicey situation. In the first epistle of Saint Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 7, verse 8, Saint Paul enjoined the widows who cannot control themselves to remarry. And I want to believe that this also applies to widowers. Our Father is a man of God. Every man of God should be able to control himself. Self-control is mandatory. Yes, I also agree with you here. But he insists he needs company. Especially when you children are back in school. Papa, give him plenty of work to do. Send him on a mission. After all, the missionaries that brought Christianity to Africa did not come with their wives. Yes. Okay, children. I will do the needful. The board will meet tomorrow to deliberate on the matter. Papa, please. We know that you are the head of everything. Please, we are asking you to put your foot down. Please. Children, I may be the head here. But I do not control people's private lives. Go home and provide and let God take control. Okay? Okay, sir. Thank you so much, sir. We really appreciate it. You're welcome. Sure. Ah, it's not easy. Um, people of God, I have to remind everybody that this is a very sensitive issue. And we have to apply great wisdom because whatever we do as leaders of the church reflects on the congregation. Definitely, yes. Sir, on this issue, we don't need a long debate. Because the Bible is very clear on this. In Matthew 19 verse 12, he told his disciples 
that some people, meaning his ministers, we become eunuchs for the kingdom's sake. In the same Bible, Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians 7, verse 8 through 9, said, If a man loses his wife and wants to remarry, can't remarry. That is if they cannot control themselves. For Christ's sake, he was referring to the widows and not widowers. Eunice, what is good for the goods is also good for the gander. What Please, are we talking about here? Yes. Don't bring worldly quotations to the church of God. A dickiness. Relax. Okay? Let's see where he's coming from. Don't beg the issue, Pastor Paul. Even if what is good for the goose is good for the gander. The scripture he quoted added a caveat that if you cannot control your sexual appetite, Pastor James, can't you control yourself? We're not talking about controlling sexual appetite here. What I am talking about is me needing a company. Do you at this age want little babies with the workload you have in the church? Good question. Pastor John, please, we are not talking about babies here. If you heard me correctly, I said I need a company. Yeah. When my kids are off to school, it can be so lonely at home. Uh, but Pastor James, you will definitely have babies uh, if you get married. Talking about company, there are a lot of youth in this church who will be happy to live with him. That's a different matter altogether. It's, it's different from what he's saying. Thank you very much, Brother Paul. Thank you. Um, I've listened to everyone. And as the head of this commission, I've decided that we don't have any reason to stop him from getting married. With all due respect, our Papa and the Lord, please, can we say something? Because it is my sister and I that will leave you with this woman in question. Sure, my child. Uh, that was why I invited you to this meeting. Papa, please, if our father must remarry, it must be a woman who has reached menopause. Well said. Truly, the Bible said that wisdom is found in the mouth of babies and the suckling. So shall it be. But, 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 um, Pastor James, if you go to a negotiation table, you should be prepared to make concessions. That's the way it is. Where is this? It's my new house. Part of the compensation. <laughs> you didn't even talk about the car. That's my new car. It's also part of the compensation. Compensation for what? Damn it. I have been restored to my position in the church. <laughs> Come, let's go inside. I'll tell you the whole story. Okay. It's all right. Come. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Ah. oh, you are a saint. And I am a sinner. I don't deserve you. I don't deserve your mercy. What have you done not to deserve mercy? Stop it, Paul. You must have guessed the whole story. What was I doing with a politician? I walked out on you when the tide was against you. Janet, I don't care what you were doing with the politician. See, I have long forgiven you for working out on me. <laughs> this is not right. I am too worldly for a saintly man like you. I am fair, impatient and unloving. No. No, Janet. The woman I married is nothing like that. Oh, Paul. Oh. You are the salt of the earth and, and I am the scum. I am lost and lusty. You see, Janet, when our Lord Jesus talked about the lost sheep and the lost coin in the parable, he was talking about a situation like this. 99 sheep were okay, 
but our Lord glorifies in the recovery of just one ship. Just one. Are you for real, Paul? The Apostle Paul told the Corinthians to expel the immoral brother and sister. They got his context wrong. He told the Galatians to gently, gently restore the sin. Jenny, I am glad that you took our son to the Catholic seminary. The body of Christ is one, but with many parts. My dear, I want us to live together forever under the canopy of a merciful and loving God. Mark, how many times have I warned you never to call my wife woman? Good. She is your stepmother. Don't forbid. What? This woman does not possess the quality to step into our late mother's shoes. Yes. Honey? Daddy, since when did we begin to argue over our school allowances? Since this wretched woman came into our family. And she has made daddy so weak that he does not see it. Anita! The man you call your father is my husband and it is my responsibility to protect him from you rogues no, no, no. yes why are you rogue? you this barren gold digger Rose. honey they're my children you don't call them rogues please honey i cannot take this anymore no i am ready for you Ruth. Ruth. father's briefcase and all his documents including his bank details our papa in the lord this woman is the real daughter of jezebel she caused our father's death yes you that caused your death it is your daughter of jezebel you know but see not that silly act you put up that led to the that led to the other that caused you caused his death uh, idiot woman woman yes woman listen to me i'm disappointed in you for calling them rascals in my presence and you children i won't Sought your elder in my presence. You are very, very sorry, sir. It's just that we need whatever that is left in that account to continue paying for our studies. Please, any further delay, this one will siphon the woman meant for our education fund. Our oh, papa and the Lord, we don't even know this woman at all. She's like the Babylonian no. mother of Ishmael. She wants to live what she did not say. I am your father's wife. Eh? I was left. I am truly married to your father. What is wrong with you? It is you that should have the children of Eli. That was a gentleman. You are the evil one. 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 If you people regard me as your papa, you should respect my judgment and listen to me. We are very, very sorry, sir. We are sorry, sir. 
Now, now, um, woman, please, in the interest of peace and serenity, I want you to surrender the bank document. But, no, listen, because because these children have to continue their education. Thank you, Papa. Thank you, sir. Surrender the bank document. After all, you had your life before you, you, you married them just last month. How can I do that? What will be my gain in all this? What will be my gain in all this? At my buzzero! At my buzzero! At my buzzaka! At my buzzaka! In all this, what is my gain there? I can't think about it now. So, this. You are supposed to. No, 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 no. That's not true. That's not true. Gentlemen, can I help you? Well. My boss would like to have uh, another chat with her. I thought she has already been interrogated and cleared. Well, that is true, but certain fresh facts requires that she answers more questions, and that will be at the headquarters. Officer, you must realize that she is also a victim. It's just that she was lucky to survive. Of course we do. But in our line of duties, little or easily overlooked details can help solve in a case like this. Darling, I am so sorry for causing you pains. No, 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 no. You don't have to apologize. The Lord says we should praise Him in good times and in bad times. In Psalm 40, verse 2, He says He will deliver you from a horrible pit. Oh, you're such a darling. Let me just go with them, please. I'll, I'll go with you. No, no. Remember you have a meeting with the GO. But let me just go. Oh, that's true, that's true. Okay, uh, the Lord is your strength. Let's go. Every man. hour, pray with Exodus 14 and 14. The Lord shall fight your battles and will hold your peace. Mm. I'll join you as soon as I'm through with the deal. Mm. Okay? <laughs> Brethren, I have asked myself these questions time without number. Why? Am I involved in one scandal after the other? Not out of my making. But then I, I, I get involved, one way or the other. Why am I facing all these problems? But then, I got an answer. Paul, why not you? It happened to Moses. It happened to Peter. Apostle Paul. David. Job, even our Lord Jesus Christ. But then, I'm a human being. I still wonder why should I keep having these experiences? On my GC record. Pastor Paul, I understand how you feel. Temptations must come. Trials must come, but as a child of God, you will conquer all, just like the people you mentioned did. That is exactly what I'm trying to say. Why should I always be the one to pass through these temptations and tribulations? I have reviewed my life as a follower of Christ for 20 years. I still can't reconcile why these things are happening to me. <laughs> Just like your wife being a politician's car when he was assassinated and she being arrested. Uh, well, Paul, my son, uh, just like Deaconess Eunice pointed out, there are bound to be temptations and trials must come. But never you see any temptation to be insurmountable because that was what made David different from every other Israelite. All the Israelites saw Goliath to be impossible but David saw the weakness in Goliath and capitalized on it to defeat Goliath. Okay? 
Our brother here, uh, John, will be more involved in your problems. But I want to show you that with strong faith and prayers, you will conquer the end. And we're also going to support you strongly with our prayers. That's right. Sir. Okay? Yes. As you walk with him, you should try to keep me posted. I want to know from time to time how you are getting on. And with God on your side, you will come out and conquer. That's right. Amen. 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 Thank you, Daddy. Pastor Paul, yes. I have secured the services of a good lawyer who has assured me that the process of releasing her will not be too long. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, yes. Pastor John. You know, since that thing happened, I've not had any sleep at all. Mm -hmm. What's going on? What's going on? Is everything all right? No, sir. Mr. Paul, sorry. Pastor Paul. Everything is finished. Everything. No, that make you sense. What is finished? The old company is born to grow. Even some staff got bombed. It was all madness. I mean, the old complex was raised in a matter of minutes. Jesus. Everything is finished, Mr. Paul. Sorry, Pastor Paul. God! Oh, God! Hi! Where is he now? I mean, Frank. Where is Frank now? Just keep your eyes on him Keep your eyes